Merry Christmas. Thanks for the 50 subs. It motivates me. Anyways, moving on to a theory that I've calculated and recalculated five times due to missing paperwork, and then finally established a proper organization system to help it. Home Alone. I've seen a few YouTube videos and internet posts about the physics of Home Alone, and Screen Junkies got a professional doctor to analyze the traps, but it was just the injury aspect, not how they get injured. I'm here today to use physics to dissect the first film and debunk it inside out. The first injury we are introduced to is the BB gunshots. BB guns like these typically typically dish out bullets at around 500 feet per second, or 152.4 meters per second. I'd originally tried to calculate the speed myself, but home alone is very inconsistent with their timing so it was impossible. The bullet takes 10 milliseconds to fire, so the bullet's acceleration is 15,240 meters per second per second. Measuring the steel BB, I found its volume, and using the density of steel, I found its mass. One bullet is about a third of a gram. How weightless. That will sadly affect the force greatly, making it a measly 5 newtons. Although, all of that is concentrated into a tiny spot, so the pressure is 50 pounds per square inch. That is less than 50 pounds being exerted on Marv's forehead, and Harry's, um, groin. Injuries number 2, 3, and 4, are all uncalculatable. Just know that by the end of those, Marv and Harry will have bad necks, sides, and backs. Calculating the force of the iron was fun. Yet again, Home Alone displays inconsistencies with timing, as if it actually took the iron 4.2 seconds to fall, it would have gone 125 meters. Ignoring the timing, the shaft looks to be about 7 feet or 2.12 meters. Using a little equation I devised, we can solve for the force applied to Marv's face. Irons weigh 3 kilograms, and the number for gravity is 9.81 meters per second per second. The buffering distance that the iron has to slow down is 1 centimeter. The force slamming Marv's head is 6,239.16 newtons. That is the equivalent to 1,386.48 pounds, or 630.22 kilograms. KO. The heated doorknob was a tricky one to calculate. It took excruciating effort to find out what it was made of, obviously it was steel. Steel has a melting point of around 1,500 degrees Celsius or 2,732 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously, it wasn't that, so it had to be less. Barbecue starters are very very hot, past 100 degrees, the boiling point of water. Let's play it very safe, and say that this doorknob was in the middle of those, at around 700 degrees Celsius or 1292 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than enough to burn the skin off. Now we see Marv climbing stairs full of tar, and then he steps on a nail. That is very painful, and could get infected due to the tar and other elements. But I'm here to truly analyze. Next, Marv falls down the stairs. Using the equation I previously devised, and adding some trigonometric functions due to the angle he falls on, I found out that the force he hits the ground with is 17,016.27 newtons, the highest number we've seen yet. That's 3,781.39 pounds of force, or 1,718.82 kilograms. Now the blowtorch trap. This one was wildly fun to analyze, because of the extreme heat a blowtorch produces. This blowtorch is old, and the heat produced onto Harry's head averaged out to be, I kid you not, 1980 degrees Celsius. That would go through him. Not only would Harry no longer be Harry, but he'd no longer have a head or brain to process my pun. Although, the next two traps enacted on Harry are far less dangerous, being sticky wrap on his face and feathers from the fan. Marv stepping on Christmas ornaments would give him even more foot cuts to cope with. The toy cars aren't one I can analyze. It's uncalculatable. Although, the pain will only add to their already badly injured backs. The paint cans were the fun ones to analyze. Using the force formula from before, I discovered that each bad guy got hit with 10,176 newtons. That's 4,625.46 pounds, or 2,102.48 kilograms. That would easily be enough to knock them down the stairs. Oh, luckily for me, it did. Using yet again the same force formula, I found out that Marv hit the ground with almost 30,000 newtons, and Harry then crushed him with another 25,000. That's a grand total force exerted on Marv 12.2 thousand pounds, or 5.5 thousand kilograms. These guys should have been long since dead. Harry then is foolish and trips on a trip wire, adding further to his bad neck. Now this was a fun one. Before I get too in-depth about the devastating repercussions of whacking your friend at 25 kilometers an hour with a 7-pound metal crowbar, I'll just say that all of this would frighten the tarantula so badly that it would inject a ton of poison into Marv's face, giving him feelings of several bee stings, thus causing him to faint. I talk about bee stings in my dumb ways to die video, I'd recommend you check it out. Now getting into the force. Luckily, this force is easier to calculate than the other times I've done it. I already explained the weight and speed of the crowbar, 
Star, now the Force, and the Force Marv should have killed Harry with, is 23,188 newtons, 5,152.89 pounds, or 2,342.22 kilograms. It is unfathomable how insanely that must have felt to Harry, yet he gets up to destroy Kevin, who when you think about it, wasn't the antagonist in the situation. Go after Marv, jeez, he just killed you. The epic rope swing was interesting. I used trichonometry to find out how far away Marv and Harry were from the house, then how high up they were, and according to my calculations, they'd have hit the ground, not the wall. But if they did hit the wall, I used my old force equation to discover that they'd have hit it with 13,390.65 newtons. I don't believe that anything will ever compare to the crowbar. Finally, the old man that KO'd them with his snow shovel. Surprisingly, the force wasn't that much. I calculated 112.36 newtons, but I guess if the movie is the boss, then we follow its demented law-breaking logic, and those two were knocked out. So yes, in a way, the old man was a killer. I mean, how do you know that wouldn't kill them? So after the intense calculations, Home Alone 1's traps aren't all deadly, but the ones that are, most definitely are. These burglars need to be Captain Chantel Dubois to survive this. Why not check out that theory? I discover how insane her moves are and just how heavy she'd need to be to break all of the things she does. Please like, comment and subscribe.